Okay, so we want to find the cosine of the angle between i minus j plus k and the vector with initial point p110 and terminal point q111. Alright, so we uh, first have to find the, the component form of this vector given by this initial point, and um, the component form is obtained by subtracting the coordinates of the initial point from the terminal point. So we go 1 minus 1 is 0, there it is, 0. Now that we have the component form, we take we recall the formula for the uh, the angle between two vectors. So we have so we have here uh, in component form, let's say PQ. Then we have the vector. Here, let's call that vector uh, V. We want to call this vector here V. theta is here, and the formula that we know is that the cosine of theta, we actually prove this, this in class, is equal to, um, to the dot product of PQ, with um, V divided by the norm of PQ, the norm of V, and that's, th that's precisely what we have obtained here, and um, so we do the computations, and this dot product up here becomes 1. The norm of uh, this vector is obviously um, 1, the square of 0 plus the square of 0 plus the square of Square rooted is just the square root of 1, which is 1. And then the norm of this vector is just the square root of 1 square plus negative 1 square plus 1 square. So that's the square root of 3, and that's exactly what we have here. And now, if you want, you can um, find um, the um, the actual angle, but I just wanted um, the cosine of theta, the actual angle, uh, turns out to be um, 50, uh, 54.74 degrees, so it's, it's right here. So, um, so this is actually 54.74 degrees, and of course you're finding to get that, you have to take the r cosine of this, and that's basically it. All right, so now what we want to do is um, do this problem. So we have the norm of v is equal to 3, and they're asking, what is uh, v dot v? Well, we recall that v dot v is equal to the normal v squared 
this immediately implies that that um, three squared is equal to v dot v, since the normal v we were told was actually equal to three. So we're done then. Next, we are asked to find the projection of W, the vector W, on V. And um, now if you recall what that is, is um, you have a vector W, and then you have a vector, let me actually do this differently. You have a vector, uh, let's say W, then you have a uh, vector, let's say V, and you want to find the projection of W on V. So um, you drop a perpendicular. this vector here that I am actually going to show um, this vector is going to be the projection of W on V. Alright, so we want to find that vector. And uh, to do that um, we actually have to um, to use uh, this formula here, the projection of W on V is equal to W dot V divided by the norm of V square. This is a constant here times V. So, um, so we also have to place this um, this vector given as a, as a directed line segment into component form. So we look at the coordinates of the terminal point. One zero and subtract from the coordinates of the terminal points, or rather the terminal point, the coordinates of the initial point. So this is going to be two minus one, one minus one, and uh, zero minus zero. So this is the resulting vector, and we call it W. So there it is. So now we apply it to the formula, and u dot v is going to be just the vector, or rather u dot v is just going to be the constant 1, that is the dot product, and now the normal v is just going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 3, and you take the square root of that, but then we have to take the square of the norm, so we do that here, we take the square of the norm, and then we multiply by the scalar, the vector v, which we know is 1, 1, 1, and we are, we are done. So in the next uh, question, they ask us if 
the normal v, v cross w is six, what is the area of the parallelogram spanned by the vectors two v and w? So we go, and we know that that the norm equals to six is just this, and now we um, we want to know what two times the vectors the vector v cross product with vector w is, is going to be so well we know that that's just going to be the absolute value of 2 taken out of the cross product um, and then you take the norm of v cross w so this is just going to be 2 times 6 which is equal to 12 recall that that, that if you have a um, a vector let's say Omega, and you take the norm of omega, um, and of omega times, let's say, a constant a, so a times omega, this is just going to be equal to, this is just going to be equal to, um, the absolute value of A times the norm of omega. So this is what's happening here. So this is why that became that. Um, now, in the next question, we have that um, that V cross W is equal to Y plus J plus K, what is V dot I plus J plus K? Well, let's recall that um, if you have two vectors, um, the cross product of these two vectors is going to be perpendicular. to the two initial vectors, all right? So this is V, um, mm, this is going to be V here, sorry. This is W. So the cross product is going to be perpendicular, right? And um, so obviously, if you take the dot product um, and um, with one of the vectors, the resulting vector and one of the vectors, you're going to get zero. So this is uh, so then obviously um, v dot the vector um, i plus j plus k has got to be zero because it is perpendicular. No. So that's that's how that follows. The next question was if v cross w equals u, what is w cross v? Well, I'll explain really briefly. Well, it's got to be negative u because the cross product is uh, what they call anti-commutative. And we discussed this property in class. Uh, if I take the cross product of a vector with, um, with another vector, then um, if I reverse the order of the cross product, then I actually end up with the negative of the result. So, so that's, that's the story.